Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will discuss a number of considerations when undertaking a loft conversion, not only structural considerations, but also height requirements and insulation requirements. The first consideration should be the height obtainable in the converted space, and as a general rule the roof should provide a head height of at least 2.15 meters for half of its width. This height has to be assessed in recognition of the following. Will the rafters need to be strengthened with respect to the additional load from plasterboard and insulation? Typically, a concrete tile will weigh 50 kilograms per square meter, and the felt and battens will be 10 kilograms per square meter. Thus the total dead load in this example will be 60 kilograms per square meter. Now, considering the insulation which can typically weigh 5.67 kilograms per square meter, and the plasterboard which can weigh 11 kilograms per square meter, this equates to an additional load of 17 kilograms per square meter, which is an increase of just over 28%. In addition to this, the thickness of the rafters may be determined by the type of felt lining used. A breathable felt will require a 25 mm air gap between the underside of the felt and the insulation, whereas a bituminous felt will require a 50 mm air gap. This means that a minimum 125 mm or 150 mm deep rafter section will be needed to meet this requirement, assuming 100 mm of insulation between the rafters. New rafters can be placed alongside depending on space requirements, or the existing rafters may be strengthened. The purlin will also require some structural assessment to ensure it can sustain the additional load, and be strengthened as necessary. Dormer windows may necessitate the removal or cutting of a purlin, and one option is to support the purlin from a beam at ceiling level and create a small load-bearing stud wall between the purlin and the beam to transmit the loads to the new beam. The ceiling joists are unlikely to be able to sustain the additional loads from the proposed usage. The ceiling joists will have been designed to carry an imposed load of 0.25 to 0.5 kN per square meter, but a proposed conversion will lead to an imposed floor load, which under residential use will be 1.5 kN per square meter. Thus, the ceiling joists will need to be strengthened, which may be difficult, and cause damage to the plaster below if ceiling binders are to be removed. Consequently, it is normal practice to install new beams spanning between the new steel beams, which support the purlin. A modern trust roof is more difficult to convert and expert advice should be obtained prior to undertaking any alterations to such a structure. So now we want to choose the ideal option either a timber beam or a flitch beam. However, what is the flitch beam? A flitch beam is a beam comprising timber and steel plates between or at the side of a single or a number of timber members. These types of beams can be used in their own right or as a repair to existing beams. The introduction of a steel plate to a timber section can make it much stronger. So suppose you have a 3.5 meters beam with a dead load of 3 kN per square meter, and an imposed load of 1.5 kN per square meter. If we undertake analysis of timber beam, say 200 mm by 200 mm in grade C24, also flitch beam comprising two grade C24 timber beams 75 mm by 200 mm with a central steel plate between 8 mm by 195 mm. The M12 bolts pass through the timber, through the steel plate, and are spaced at 500 mm centers. Firstly, for a timber beam 200 mm by 200 mm in grade C24 timber. We get these results. On the other hand, a flitch beam analysis shows. It can clearly be seen that the flitch beam is much stronger, and the beam is actually smaller measuring 158 mm by 200 mm. 
It is therefore smaller in cross-sectional area than its equivalent section in timber. Any smaller section in timber would initially fail in the deflection criterion. Thanks for watching. We hope you found some useful tips. Check out our website at structuralengineercalcs.com. Please like and subscribe, and let us know what would you like to see next. The human footprint is a masterpiece of engineering and a work of art. Stay safe. Goodbye, and see you soon.